Okay, welcome back. So, you know, in the last segment we talked about all the nasty health effects associated with meth, and I guess there's really others now that I think of it, because that's what meth does to the user's body, but the, <clears throat> the habits themselves result in, in people being, you know, slabbed out on the floor, unconscious, and then the kids are running around. Uh, there's <clears throat> urination, and I, I see feces on the ground. The, the sanitation issues are horrible, and in the homes that I have been in, it's really sad because you see where unattended children, and you can only imagine what's happening with the parents, but the unattended children are, are coloring on walls and cabinets, etc., cetera, um, <clears throat> because that's what there is to do. And, you know, it, it, just, it just hurts you. Seeing the, uh, we'll call it the side effects of, of having a parent on meth uh, who has children. So as a result of all of that nastiness, uh, back in 2004, the state of Utah recognized that there was a meth problem in Utah of substantial proportions. So, and there was a lot of meth labs in Utah. So they very justifiably so decided to shut down those meth labs. And what they decided to do, <clears throat> the law was called Illegal Drug, Drug Operations Site Reporting and Decontamination Act. Not that that's going to be on a test, but that's the name of the law. It was done in 2004. The purpose of that, again, was to shut down meth labs. There was a lot of them. Utah County, for example, right after the law was enacted, they started keeping track of the labs that had been identified and, and were being cleaned up. There was, <clears throat> if you talk to that guy, uh, he's retired since then, but he said that at first there was about 10 new labs in Utah County uh, for each month. And in Salt Lake County and other counties, um, you know, there were, let's just say many, but I have the numbers for Utah County. And that's a huge problem. So what they did is part of this uh, decontamination act is they says, all right, we're going to make the ingredients to meth labs a lot more difficult to get. This is pseudoephedrine, ephedrine, uh, lye, phosphorus, and uh, you know there are some other very common items that can be found at Walmart that you, you use in a uh, meth lab. So they made some of those much more difficult to get a hold of. Uh, and it actually worked. Within a few years, in Utah County, for example, the uh, number of new labs went from 10 per month uh, new labs to basically one or two every two or three months. Definitely shut down the uh, labs, at least that were being identified and reported. Now, <clears throat> the thing is that, and you the realtor will understand this as well as anybody, Let's say you go into a house, maybe it was a lab last night. I've seen where maybe the painters that were hired to paint uh, grandma and grandpa's house, they actually did their painting and then they had their own lab and then they left. But as the realtor, you never know. I mean, it's just an empty house when you and I walk in. So the law in 2008 was changed so that it was no longer just about labs, it was about labs or use or production or even just having meth contamination there. So yeah, the out was, hey, this place is contaminated, but we're gonna say it was use. Actually, based on my experience, it probably was use. Um, most homes are just use and as opposed to being labs, at least at this point in time. Um, so, you know, there was that gray zone. So in 2008, they rewrote the law so to basically say, hey, we don't care if it was labs or use. Um, if it's contaminated, it's contaminated and it's got to be decontaminated. So uh, that is the legal history of, of uh, what this all looks like um, as far as the state is concerned. Now, one other thing I should mention to you while we're talking about labs. It used to be that they would, um, <clears throat> you know, and there's a few different ways to cook meth. Uh, back in the day, there was two primary ones, but uh, that's changed. Right now, 
and I actually have seen this in the headlines, there was a guy that was arrested for doing a shake and bake lab within Walmart. He was basically going in, he emptied a 7-Up bottle, he was dumping in all the ingredients for a shake and bake lab, and he was actually labbing meth inside that 7-Up bottle inside Walmart's aisles. Uh, this is how readily available all these ingredients are. So, if you have some perhaps preconceived notions that it's not a lab unless you see the beakers and the tubes and the vials and all the chemistry set stuff, uh, that just might not be the case. And, you know, it's even possible to have a lab happen somewhere and maybe it doesn't even show up in a, in a test because maybe they did it uh, shake and bake, maybe they did it another way, maybe they did it in the garage, which doesn't necessarily have to be tested, maybe they did it in an out sort of a building, whatever. Uh, there's a lot of sideways stuff that can happen as, re as relates to labs. Something I want to be clear with you on though, so that you understand the difference, is labs and use. Labs obviously is where they make the stuff, use is where they smoke it. The state doesn't care. As of 2008, if it's contaminated beyond the legal limit, it's contaminated and, doesn't, and it has to be decontaminated. If you hear the seller object, well, it wasn't a lab, doesn't matter. If it's contaminated, it's got to be decontaminated.